hi guys and welcome back to my channel i hope you're doing really well uh it is friday today and i have had the busiest week um and i feel like i haven't come on here and i haven't been on youtube for a while um i definitely haven't done like a real time draw with me for over a week which it's really sad um, because I love chatting to you guys and I really miss you when I'm not on here. So um, yeah, so I thought I would come on here today and just give a little bit of an update, do some filming, do like this little real time draw with me. I'm working on um, this portrait of Dino still. Um, obviously there's been lots of things going on in the background uh, recently. Um, so just a little like update. Um, I did a, another um, bumblebee print for those of you who don't follow me on social media on Instagram and stuff um, you probably won't know but yeah so I launched my latest bumblebee piece and the response again was phenomenal um, the the prints sold really really well um, I've just literally about an hour ago got back from the post office dispatching all the orders still got a couple um, prints left in the print run before it sells out completely so um, still got, yeah, as I said, a little while to go. I think there's about 10 left. Um, out of the small ones and a couple more of the medium ones. Um, I saw the sort of slightly larger ones, but, um, yeah, so the print run's been phenomenal. And, um, if you have ordered a print, and a massive, massive thank you, um, especially during this time. I mean, your support is invaluable always, but more than ever at the moment. It really, really means the world to me. Um, so when, um, we all start coming in, it's almost like, it's quite it's exciting, but it's almost like quite nerve wracking because it's hard to know how, or like how it's all going to go, you know, there's a lot of pressure to get when you get, um, quite a lot of orders because you, I mean, I, I feel like, um, yeah, there's just, I don't think there's anything more to say about it than you, I just feel like a, a lot of pressure to deliver everything's got to be packaged up in the right way everything's got to be like quality controlled um and i mean it takes me so i think in total i just shipped out about 80 orders and um it took me a good three i was working solidly on it yesterday and the afternoon before that and in the evening before that. so i'd say probably like two full days um if not more and that was it wasn't just me my mum's currently not working she's been furloughed so um she was helping me out as well um so yeah it's just been it's been a very 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 um busy couple of days here um not that I'm complaining at all I mean as I said I'm so so grateful for all the orders and for everyone's love of, of and the just be piece um but yeah it's been quite exhausting and obviously like whenever i do a big print run like that and it, it sells well then um as i said it's just it fills me with like with a little bit of anxiety because it, as i said there's a lot of pressure to deliver and i was very very fortunate that um my one of my sort of local printers um what was sorry one of my local framing uh, companies decided that they were kind of going to open behind closed doors like not to the public and i just need sharpness yeah so um they didn't open they're not open to the public but they're sort of taking orders for just like prints and mounts and anything like that they need any like printing service and they're beginning to sort of start opening again so I was very, very fortunate that they did manage to um, cut me a good load of mounts. Um, I have a lot of people that ask me where I get my mounts made and do I order them online and I don't. Um, just because I've never really found a company that I was really happy with the quality and I've always sort of tried to go local, support local business. So I just use my local framers. As I said, um, I've got like two local suppliers who do most of my like printing and and not the printing sorry um the like the mounting the framing um they do a large format printing as well um but small stuff i print myself so like the bees and stuff um so i kind of just printed all the bees off took them over they managed to put um 
cut them out, so then brought them home. And then the procedure really starts and it's so time consuming. It honestly I can't explain how long this, like these things take. Um so the whole procedure so when if I just like w like walk you through the procedure almost then um so the order comes in and I do a little happy dance obviously because it's just amazing and I feel very very fortunate to be sort of able to sell my artwork um, and then it's sort of like right okay see what the order is and if it's like a small print then you know I print it off everything is printed to order so I flash up my Mac open up photo shoot um, photo shoot, Photoshop, find the file, print it off um, on my fine art printer um, and for anyone who's interested in what printer I use I did a whole video all about sort of like my essential go-to art supplies and I talk about my printer on there in there and I sort of give a link to where you can buy the same one or one like it from so yeah I am um, I'm just <laughs> I find it really, really hard to sort of walk, um, work and concentrate and, and talk at the same time at the moment. Um, I haven't done this for a while and I think that's why I'm kind of struggling. So anyway, so I print off the order and I use um, my fine art paper. I use obviously the archival inks and stuff in the printer. So it's all like properly um, fine art printed, like fine art approved and um, like the inks are guaranteed to last 75 years. So you, you know, it's, it's it's quality stuff that is well, it's as good quality as I can possibly make it, and um, it's all yeah, it is it is professional grade. So I um, print off the order, and then I print off the shipping label on my Dymo printer, label printer, and also the actual sort of invoice, so I know exactly where it's going and what the order is. Um, and from there I go downstairs and get a mount or go and get one cut from my local suppliers and then I find I print off a certificate of authenticity and label it, sign it, number it, um, give it a title and things like that and then hand sign and label the print and number it as well and then I have to put the print into the mount so I have to hang hang it almost in the mount and then from there it gets cellophaned so I don't use cellophane bags um, everything gets hand cellophaned um, with the archival, no, it's not archival, it's acid free cellophane and then from there what happens <laughs> I've, I've spent the last three days doing it and now I'm like oh my god I don't know what I'm doing and um, I don't know what I'm talking about um, so yeah and then from there they go and get tissue papered so I've got a big rolled tissue paper that I cut up and then I probably like fold it like a little parcel and then they have it gets a ribbon on it and then, then I tie the ribbon in a knot and a bow at the front and then a business card gets attached to it and then a handwritten thank you note goes on each one and then it goes I mean I've changed so when I launched my last B run um, I had a bit of a palaver because it was taking so so long to dispatch all the orders and it it just wasn't time effective and it wasn't it wasn't really working the whole way that I did it before just didn't really work it took way 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 too long I think it took me a week to get all the orders out and I needed to find a quicker solution so before I was using um like plastic corners, I was cutting bits of backboard, um, so MDF board, and like sandwiching them and putting it in brown paper, um, especially the international ones, they were going in bubble wrap, and it was taking so so long. So, I decided to invest and get some cardboard boxes, and then they come flat packed. And so, I measured them and made sure everything was going to fit, and they still go sort of um, in the small. Uh, as a small parcel for the, with the parcel and um, with the um, Royal Mail company that I use and yeah so they, they I ordered these like two about 200 boxes they all turned up and they're all flat packed and you have to build the boxes and put them all together which doesn't take that long and then 
the next problem that I had when I did this was re I realised that the print was very, obviously even though it had bubble wrap and tissue paper and everything around it, it was still very very thin in comparison to how thick the boxes were. So I had to spend a little bit of time trying to work out how I was gonna um, just like make it all work, how I was going to make everything fit because it just seemed like I had all this space and I didn't want everything to be sort of rattling around, I didn't want to keep using corners because it was going to take me forever to put plastic corners on everything and there was no point in cutting with extra mount board because that just defeats the object of having these sort of sturdy boxes. So yeah, we had to go back and forth with lots of different ideas and managed to get hold of some foam, like those little foam pellets. Um, so I managed to sort of use lots of tissue paper, sandwich all the orders together in lots of tissue paper and bubble wrap and these foam pellets and <laughs> it kind of worked. Um, I hope they're going to get there, they should get there all safely now um, because I've sort of packaged them in the best way that I know how and I've been doing this for like five years and touch wood, never really had a problem with any of the postage but I just, it's hard because the prints aren't expensive. Um, for fine art prints. I mean the bumblebees were um, £35 for the small one and sort of £55 for the medium one. Um, the, sorry, the slightly larger um, one. So for a, you know, a fine art print when, you know, and it just takes, I don't feel like it defeats the object when it takes so long uh, doing all the packaging because I think, you know, I think packaging but art is so 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 important like it's so important to get your branding right and it's so as an artist um because obviously people are buying something from you but it's so important to get your packaging right because people you know they don't have to be spending their money on art and i've always always said this art is such a luxury thing no one really needs art it's nice to have but it's not like food it's not like you really people really need it so if they're gonna invest money in it you almost need it, you really, well, you almost, you really do need it to be like a luxury item. So they feel like it's really special when they open it. Well, that's my opinion anyway. And it's, it's just, um, it's very, very time consuming to do that many orders. And I think after, like, today when I got back from the post office, I was quite brain dead. I had to go and sit down and have some lunch and things like that. And I just... It's, you know, if I wish they were, because I have a lot of people that message me saying, no, I love the way you package, I would love to, how would you do it? And like, I'm very, very fortunate to be in the position that um, I did have, you know, this vast amount of orders come in, but I'm still not 100% there with the packaging myself. I mean, I do it in the best way possible, but I kind of make myself too much work. Um, it shouldn't take three days to package up that many orders um and it's you know i know that the packaging is really appreciated and you know i'm that's the reason why i keep doing what i do um and putting the effort in with the packaging but it's, i think it's it's quite difficult because i know quite a few people that don't like make such an effort with their packaging and um I mean, they still they still get lots and lots of orders, so it's hard. But the thing is, once I once you sort of like you know, build up a brand and you know people know what to expect from you, they know they're almost going to receive like a present in the post, and um, it it does make you know it does keep your customers quite loyal. I find anyway. Um, but anyway, so yeah. So it's been it's been a bit of a a mad few days, um, and I'm just. I'm gonna try and take tomorrow off, which will be my first day off in uh, quite a while now. Um, so I'm quite looking forward to having some downtime. Um, I think I'm gonna do some baking. I, haven't put, I feel like I haven't baked in like ages and I absolutely love making cakes. So that is my plan of action for, um, for my day off. And then I will be packaging orders again on Sunday and probably just doing some hoping and hopefully doing some more drawing and cracking on with this portrait um because obviously with all the bees and stuff i feel like i'm quite far behind now with where i'm meant to be with this portrait because when i first started working on dino i was hoping that i'd, I'd have finished sort of over this weekend but that's really not going to happen now which isn't a problem but it just pushes my whole diary back a few days well 
about a week, um, which isn't ideal, but I can't help these things. And the other thing is I really, really don't like having a lot of time away from an, a drawing because I feel like I kind of lose momentum with it a little bit. Like, I struggle to get stuck back into it. And, <clears throat> yeah, it's just a bit... It can be a bit problematic sometimes, but... It's fine. Hopefully, I thought if I chuck the camera on and have a catch-up with you guys, then it will kind of make me focus and get some of this work done so thanks guys because without you and without youtube then i'll probably take this afternoon off no. um but yeah it just kind of enforces that i get some actual work done and keep up with sort of like momentum and trying to crack on with the commission order forms um orders order forms um but like the commissions and stuff like that Trying to build up the colour here. Um, going back and forth the different colours to build up. Yeah, I'm trying to think what else has happened really, but apart from having obviously the orders and, and doing that kind of stuff, it's been quite quiet. Um, there's been, you know, not a lot that's been happening because, but well, we are kind of um, allowed to do a little bit more in the UK now. Like they've kind of opened us up a little bit more, and um, so we we're allowed to sort of travel a bit further and go for our daily exercise, and we're allowed to have unlimited exercise now. So it's just like one walk or one run a day, which is nice. Um, because there's some sort of really nice local places to go near me for a nice sort of like walk and stuff so um obviously it is mental health awareness week next week and for those of you who know me and follow me and have followed me for a while you will know I'm a massive advocate for mental health um because it's something that I have suffered with and yeah openly have spoken about many a time um so I'm going to try and film a big video um on uh, on youtube all about mental health and mental health as an artist as well because i think it's really really important to not shy away from talking about it especially at the moment because mental health is more important now than it's ever been i think before especially due to the coronavirus and what it's meant for everyone's mental health because i feel like people have suffered um and you know it's not just obviously mental health but it's sort of like domestic abuse cases it's unhappy families like it's it's caused a lot a lot of problems obviously it is mental health awareness week so i'm going to focus on that mainly um but i found myself like getting quite not down about it but just um struggling a little bit with routine i think more than anything else i mean as an artist i don't really have routine anyway and i've never really had a routine um i kind of know what i've got to do each day and try and get that that sort of work done um and then whatever is left afterwards then you know if anything's left that day and it's not massively important i'll push it through to the next day and you know i don't have a set time when i wake up and i don't have a set time when i go to bed or anything like that it's just i sort of play it by ear a little bit um which has always worked fine for me um but i feel like when you are looking to I left that rubber downstairs yeah, so as I was saying, I'm, I don't have a routine and I've never sort of had a um, anything sort of to stick by. But I've, I've found it quite hard, where, um, especially where things have been really busy. Um, one of the first things I really, really struggle with is, and I know it's going to sound probably um, a bit... Uh, I don't know. 
I don't know. Um, but like, I really struggle with not keeping momentum with my art. I've all I can always draw, and I can always um, f I always want to draw, and I think that's a big thing. Uh, there's never a day when I wake up and I think, oh no, I really, really, I'm not feeling work today. Like if I'm not feeling drawing, which to be honest, has never ever happened. Um, and I always find something else to do. You know, there's always something that I can get stuck into. Obviously I will push admin and paperwork and stuff away as much as I can because um, I don't enjoy doing it. But I really love drawing and I, you know, drawing has always made me happy. And it's always been sort of like, the studio has always been my happy place. So for me, that's the place where I want to spend the most time. But when that happens, I feel like I definitely, and um, things get too much and things get stressful. I definitely let myself go. So. I will not be as good for my exercise and obviously it's not easy at all at the moment because the gyms are shut and as I've spoken about many a time in these videos, um, the gym and a class called Blaze which is my favourite class of all time um, is what I is what keeps me going, it keeps me mobile because Blaze has got so much boxing and martial arts and, and uh, weights and um, running and everything in it, it's such, such a mixed bag it um, allows my shoulders to keep really active which is really important that because obviously with the job that I do my shoulders can seize up quite a lot so it's and obviously without having the gym at the moment I'm really really struggling and you know for me and this is obviously just personal to me but um, where for those of you, as I said, like for those of you who know me, you'll know that my, so naturally I have got the curliest, craziest hair ever. And it is, it's quite, it's, it's not problem hair. I would never say it's problem hair, but it's, it's very, very hard to maintain. And because over the years I've dyed it so many different colours, I've been sort of purple, I've dyed it like really dark brown, I've dyed it really um, quite blonde. Um, and anyone with naturally curly hair, you will probably know that you shouldn't really use that many chemicals on curly hair because it can change its porosity levels. And I'm not going to go into the science of curly hair because I feel like it's, it will bore people. Shut the sentence if you don't have curly hair and you're not interested. So I'm not going to go into that, but it is quite, um, it's quite scientific and, um, I've only, I'm only just really learning about it, but I have very high porosity curly hair, which means that my hair over the years, with lots and lots of straightening, lots of heat, um, lots of chemical changes, i.e. sort of um, relaxants to try and stop it being like being as curly when I fought against it, to bleaching it a lot, to doing X and Y. My hair is quite, um, it's, it doesn't feel massively damaged, but it's definitely quite high porosity hair. Um, and therefore it is quite frizzy, it's very difficult to maintain, it's very like it will look fine one day and the next and then I'll sleep on it and, I'll, and it's just, it's just the worst. And um, it makes me feel quite crap about myself because it sort of restricts me from going on camera a lot of the time because my hair is, like I don't, don't get me wrong, I don't think it's important, I don't really think that people care massively about how I look though you know you guys are more interested in what I do rather than anything else I mean like my nails for example are blooming awful at the moment because I haven't had time to paint them but you know you don't massively care you're more interested in what I've got to say and why it's like whether it's a packaging story or whether it's sort of like a real time draw with me or we chat about um social media or whatever but um yeah my hair has just been like the worst recently and until I find like lots of products that I'm really happy with, then um, I just really struggle putting myself on camera and it's such a shame because there are so many videos I want to film both on YouTube and on Patreon for my sort of Patreons and I just, I get so, so self-conscious because I think like, oh, it just looks awful, my skin's really bad at the moment because I haven't been taking probably like good care of myself because um, work's been so busy and I think it's a really really fine balance you know it's really important to take time for you and do things that you enjoy and I'm a massive advocate for sort of um, 
work hard, play hard kind of thing. But at the moment, and for, ever since, I think it's almost like the worry of the whole coronavirus, like being super worried that like clients are going to commit like, cancel commissions um you know maybe you know um prints won't sell as well in the shop maybe you won't get any orders you know all these sort of worries and it's just made me go into full-on work overdrive and i've been working stupid stupid hours and my don't get me wrong my output's been good it's been the best that it's been ever but my mental health has been quite crap and I've been feeling quite crap about myself and it's just been a bit of a struggle um especially you know to get all those orders out yeah it's funny actually because um I was in the post office earlier and um I was I'm putting all sort of things through the post office and I'm really quite good friends with everyone in the post office and we were chatting away and um I was telling him about how crazy the orders have been and things like that. And um, there was a girl behind me. And um, she said, she said, oh, are you Beth Fear? And I was like, yeah. She was like, oh, I follow you on Facebook. I think your work's amazing on this. And I was like, oh, my God. I mean, thank you so much. Like, it means so much to me when people sort of come up to me and sort of say hello. And, and you know, we chat about work and stuff. But I wasn't, like, I have no makeup on and, you know, other than like trackies and my hair was just a mess and I was like oh my god this is the worst like it doesn't really uh, give me a good impression of sort of like the business and what I try and do and, and, and things like that and yeah it's just I think working so hard just makes it hard for me to sort of look after myself and to sort of give myself a proper routine with like my hair and food and exercise and things like that because my priority is my customers and keeping them happy because you know they are what keeps me going what keeps me well yeah I'm trying to think what I'm trying to say but yeah you know what I mean they're like they're they're the people that keep me going um they're sort of they generate money for me essentially and allow me to live um so they are my priority and so those orders and things like that and obviously as I said with like the worry about the whole pandemic it's been really quite stressful because you don't know when you know it's going to get paid you don't know when your next paycheck's going to come through and it's yeah it's, it's a little bit um it's a little bit stressful so i kind of yeah just not been my best self recently just and um i think that's why you know i'm i'm struggling a little bit to film as i said i've got all these videos that i want to film i'm definitely going to film one next week about um mental health and we're going to have a chat in the cat because the one of the um things that's made me really really happy over the last couple of weeks is the local farmer has released or say released and uh, put his cows out for the summer and um we got some calves and we've also got um some um baby well not they're not babies they're probably about a year and a half old and we've also got some older cows out in the field who are pregnant and um yeah it's just lovely it's really really nice the cows are lovely and i spend many an evening um just taking sort of a walk over there so i'm hoping i'm going to take you guys with me um and i'll film a video all about mental health and how to sort of find mental health as an artist because one of the things that i think people struggle with if, if you're not an artist I think people really don't understand because they'll say well you get to sit at home every day and you get to draw and you don't have any real stresses and things like that and in a way they've got a point um it can be the best job and don't get me wrong I really believe I have got the best job ever but when there is a lot of things going on and obviously the reason why I turned out in the first place was to try and erase my anxiety and it's just, yeah, I think obviously being an artist is one of the most relaxing jobs ever. When it's like this drawing and um, I get to do things like this, and don't get me wrong, it is super relaxing. But at the same time, you know, when you can't draw, what do you do? So when you've got this packaging to do, and what, what if art isn't enough? And what I mean by that is like, you need more than your art 
to give you a fulfilled, not fulfilled life, but give you like a well-rounded experience of things and to give you, like, give you a well-rounded mental health. Like, don't get me wrong, art has been a massive saviour for me and it's definitely keep like, kept me going through some pretty dark times that I've faced over the years. But I need more than that. So once you give everything to your art, you have to almost take from something else and it's if you give too well I guess what I'm trying to say is if you give too much then it's hard to claim and to find yourself again in a way and I know that sounds really deep and really a bit blur but you know I think I hope you know what I mean like I've just been I've given so much to this work recently I've given so much to, to this that I've definitely just lost myself a little bit and it's hard because I will never have a problem with drawing, I will never have a problem with this, but sometimes even little things like chatting to people, you know, I sometimes find that if I have worked for too long and I haven't chat I've spoken to anyone for a while, then I find it really, really hard to have a social like conversation again, which is really, really mad. It's almost like you forget how to talk. So yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of what's been on my mind recently. And um, I think it's a video that I do want to make. I want to make a video all about sort of how to try and snap out of the whole uncertainty that we're currently feeling. Um, and I want to, if I can, I'm going to try and make it as cinematic as possible because I love those sort of videos. And I'm really, really fascinated to try and sort of like make some quite cinematic um well, say cinematic videos. You know what I mean? Just like some just interestingly edited videos. I want to up my editing game, I think that's what I mean, without sort of creating a lot more work for myself. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try and give that a go and see what happens. And I'm, I'm quite looking forward to giving myself to, to that and to create some more content for YouTube, I'm hoping. So coming back to sort of like my my curly hair dilemma problem at the moment um i went out and i've spent um a little bit of money on some new products so i'm hoping i'm gonna it's like i'm gonna wash my hair later and i'm just gonna have a play and see see how it well see how it looks afterwards and just see see what happens um there is a great youtube channel and instagram account on um if anyone if anyone has got like this is the last thing i'm gonna say about it but if anyone has got curly hair or crazy hair like mine there is a brilliant channel called um mains by mal and um she is just like a curly hair guru she has got the best most infectious personality and she's hilarious so i would 100 percent recommend going to go um, going to check her out if you've got any sort of problem hair um or any sort of curly hair like questions or she's taught me so much and um yeah so i'm gonna sort of take some of her advice and try and gonna go and give it a go and try and um do what i can and try to try and help my hair and make myself feel a little bit better along the way so i might go and see the cows later as well and uh I want to paint my nails and just have a little bit of a, like a, a me, like a, not a pamper session, but you know, just to do things that I enjoy um, and try and like connect, reconnect with myself. And um, that sounds really weird, doesn't it? But you know what I mean? Just like trying to just, yeah, just take some time for me. Now I've got the majority of those orders out. I'm hoping that I can, um, have a little bit of chill time and as I said take tomorrow off I'm going to do some baking I'm going to make some scones and um just just try and yeah just see <laughs> I don't know really what else to say about it um I need to do some exercise that's for sure I feel I've eaten so much I think it's like quarantine anxiety um I just feel like I've just like pigged out massively um on anything bad that I can get my hands on so need to snap out of it really um so i think that'd be quite a fun and uh, maybe i should do like a quarantine routine how to find routine in quarantine um i've got all these videos i did like ideas and i've got like so many so many print ideas as well um and, like ideas for 
things that I can draw and things like that. And um, it's really, really frustrating in a way. And I'm not complaining. Please don't get me wrong. I think I'll complain it because I'm definitely not. There's a lot worse positions and places to be. But I've got so many commissions that um, I've got to try and do. And a lot of them are deadlined for around September. Um, I've got a couple of deadlines before then, but my majority of them are for September. And But there's so many of them that um, I find it really, really hard to um, make time to do anything else. And it's a shame because I've got so many ideas for limited edition prints and things that I want to draw and just like some pieces I want to take to um, and sell. And, you know, <laughs> and I don't really have any time to do them, which is... As I said, there's worse problems I have for sure, but it's a little bit frustrating because I just want to get so many different ideas done on paper and I just don't have the time at the moment. I always find that when I'm on YouTube and I'm, or on Patreon or whatever and I'm chatting, just randomly chatting and not really thinking about what I'm doing, um, I always get really worried and I find that these drawings take a little bit longer than probably what they should do. So I'm just trying to build up some of the layers. I don't feel like I'm really covering much um, drawing time at the moment, but yeah, I just wanted to um, have oh it's an order as I'm so so grateful to everyone who's uh, who's placed an order over the past week because you're just it's keeping me going at the moment you're giving me something to do and you give me something to focus on which is excellent um and you keep him keeping us very busy so as i said my mum's been furloughed so she's kind of stepping in and and helping with the packaging side of things which is a massive massive help because i feel like this would have taken a lot longer if i didn't have her support and her help through this so um i'm gonna try and film a video all about um everything there is to know about prints and everything because I forget sometimes that I've learned the hard way a lot of the time on this art journey like I didn't have a like a mentor I didn't have anyone that I was really like looking up to or could get advice from when I started so I've kind of done things half the time the wrong way but um it's definitely made me um, learn a lot of lessons and I think I forget sometimes um, everything that I have learned because I think like it could definitely help a lot of other people so I just need to try and sit down and film a video but I think I'm going to probably put that on my business Patreon um, tier because I think that it will probably give them guys a lot of help as well because a lot of them are sort of like budding I wouldn't say like budding artists a lot of them are artists and um, it's it would just be a really, really good thing to try and give them a hand with trying to launch their print business or, you know, come up with different ideas um, and things like that. I always um, get a little bit worried about, you know, when I do these real time draw with me, so I think, oh my god, they're not that interesting. But um, I've had so so many lovely messages so on Instagram recently saying how much um, you really enjoy these chatty sort of draw with me videos where, you know, you feel like, as I, as I said, like, you feel it as, like, a podcast on or you just feel like you're not alone. Um, so if you're currently drawing or you're maybe you're painting or, I don't know, whatever you're doing, hello. I'm, like, I'm really happy to be um, here with you in this um, in this drawing time, real time, draw with me, um, you know what I mean, I think, yeah, I'm really, really glad, I know it took me a long time, but I'm really glad I did start this, um, whole YouTube thing, because I feel like, you know, I can connect with you guys a lot better, we can have some sort of, um, chats about everything, and it's just really nice, I can sort of tell you what's going on, and, 
give you some, <laughs> some updates and some live stories and you know what I mean just it's just nice so yeah I, I wish I'd started it earlier in a way but it's fine we I'm here with you now I think yeah, it's what I've spoken about in a previous video it's like perfection paralysis I just didn't think that my content would be interesting enough I didn't think that people would really be interested in hearing what I've got to say so I just didn't bother putting myself out there but the more I put out there the more sort of reward that I get from it so I think that's definitely a lesson to take from this the more you put out the more you definitely get back um it's like our oh, patron and stuff to you like building up some of the Dino's fur texture. It's hard because um, the photo that I'm working from, it was taken, uh, I think it was taken in sort of like autumn I believe. So he's got like, he's still got a bit of summer coat but he's also got quite a lot of winter coat so he's a little bit fluffy and I know his owner really doesn't want him drawn to be like fluffy so I'm trying to minimise the fluff almost. I'm just going to pop in where this line goes otherwise I feel like I'm going to lose it. The bottom of the head collar. So um, yeah, it was quite funny in the post office earlier when I was sending all those um, all those orders because, as I said, like I've got such a good friendship with the people in the post office and they're so so wonderful and they're so helpful as well. Um, and where they're not really doing much at the moment because obviously like people are staying home, which is great, um, but, and people aren't really um, going out into town and post office and things like that. So they're, they're a bit, um, they said they're quite bored. So as soon as I walked in with all these sort of like about 80 orders, they just were straight in there getting, like helping. I had about five people sending all the orders out. So it was a massive help otherwise, because I feel like it would have, I would have been at the post office for the rest of my afternoon, which wouldn't be a problem, but I really, really, really wanted to get home and film, um, a raw time draw with me because yeah, as I said, it feels like it's been a long time since I've done a YouTube video and especially like a, a real time draw with me. I think it's been like almost two weeks. So I'm trying to think like, I don't think the other thing, like as I always say, I feel like there's nothing that's ever has really happened. I know a lot of people talking, if we sort of just touch on um, like YouTube and um, not on YouTube, but like TV shows to watch. I mean, obviously in the UK, and I think I think in America as well. I know Afterlife by Ricky Gervais came out, so I've been watching that um, some evenings. And people have really, really been recommending Orthodox. Um, but it's a shame because I really, really want to watch it, and I love watching things when I'm working, like films and TV and um, shows and stuff like that. But um, it's hard because obviously it's all in subtitles. Well, most of it's in subtitles. Um, so I can't watch it whilst I'm working which is gutting and I haven't really had the time to to be spending a lot of time watching TV at the moment so I'm hoping that I will be able to catch up with some TV and stuff and read a book that I've been trying to start for ages and just yeah but Tonight is definitely going to be. I'm gonna, hopefully going to go for a walk and I'm going to see my cows. So they're my cows. They're not my cows, but I love them so much. Um, and then tomorrow I'm hoping to go for a, and find um the local farm. So I'm going to go and see the baby animals because I know they've um had some lambs recently. So I'm going to go and find some lambs and they've also got some calves and some ducklings. So hopefully get some footage and put it over on Insta on my stories um, it should be great
It's uh, it's really loud. I've like got my camera half plugged in on charge at the moment. So half plugged in, no, it's definitely plugged in. But it's really hard because the wire is like hanging down and I don't want to knock it. Then the whole camera will fall. So obviously, oh, that was another thing. Oh, it was um, V Day last week in the UK. So Victory in Europe Day for anyone who wasn't aware. Um, and it was quite funny because obviously, like, there was loads and loads of streets who were doing um, celebrations and lots of things going on because obviously it was going to be a massive, massive day. We we had a massive bank holiday for it, like. Um, and so me and my mum, like over, because where we live in Portsmouth, there's um a, obviously Portsmouth's a historic dockyard, well, dock city, and it's got obviously the dockyard, um, and so there was like this massive, massive thing with, um, that was meant to be going on in the evening with all these fireworks and um, over over Portsmouth and they were going to light up the sky with all the old sort of searchlights from World War Two. So me and my mum went up onto the hill near us and um, we spent like half an hour looking for these searchlights and there was like the finest, the slightest little um, um, light coming from one of like this area of Portsmouth and it was like such, so hyped up and it was such a shame because it was just so rubbish basically which is as I said it was a shame but it was such a nice day and um it was just so sad on the side because that's just because like my grandma was meant to have a big street party and it was all going to be sort of like lots of cake and scones and everything British and just I mean she still had that they still had the street party like from a distance they were all sat on their balconies having a barbecue which was nice but um and it made you question like how long this is all going to go on for because I know obviously in the UK they're kind of easing lockdowns a little bit but I don't know how that was fake news but I read this morning when I woke up in Germany they have eased the lockdown completely like opened up the whole of society again in some places like gyms and things like that and within days the coronavirus death toll has like tripled um compared to what it was and I don't know people it's just it's just really really scary so yeah it's um it's a shame and it's really annoying but um so I'm, I'm just hoping that the the uk government knows what like how they not i don't think they should keep restricting us all the time i really don't and i know it's hard because i feel like a lot of people are very um you know, they've definitely got very strong opinions on what the government should be doing. And I don't think there's a right and wrong. Um, I think it's down to personal discretion at the end of the day, you know, because some people, even though we've been told that we're allowed to go out and exercise and, and go for drives and things like that, some people are saying, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. You should be trying to stay at home as best you can. And I agree. Um, you know, I shouldn't, I don't think people should be going out and being stupid. But at the same time, you know, if you're going to go, f like, for, for me, for example, one of my favourite places in the whole world is the New Forest. Um, and the New Forest just open up their car parks again and things like that. And, you know, as long as you're within your household or, you know, you're on your own or you're keeping a distance from everyone else, like, I don't think there's any harm sort of just going to a place and going for a walk. I mean, as long as you're not doing anyone any harm, I just... It's hard and I feel that people are getting very, very angry about, you know, what people should and shouldn't be doing. But I think, you know, we, it should be down to sort of personal circumstances. If you believe you're being safe, then 
I've got no problem with people going about their sort of like their daily life almost. But yeah, I know sort of it's caused caused a couple of arguments and it's caused some problems for some people. But yeah, I don't know. I think it has got to be down to personal discretion. If you think that that's the best for you, then you do you. And don't let anyone stop you, as long as you're being careful and you're being safe. Putting a base layer down now. For those of you who uh, are not massively familiar with the way I work, um, I always put like quite a heavy base layer down before I go in with um, any detail pencils because it just flattens the teeth of the paper and makes it a lot easier to draw details over the top, especially on a textured paper like watercolour paper. You don't need to smooth it down as much as possible. Now when it's all smooth I can go in with some details. But I don't think really there was anything else that I wanted to say at this point. I just wanted to tell you guys like everything that's happened with the orders and just say a massive, massive thank you for everyone who has ordered. Um, everyone new who's come over to Patreon, I mean, you guys are also absolutely incredible and I'm so, so grateful and so glad to have you over on Patreon. Um, it's definitely a platform that I'm a little bit unfamiliar with still, um, but I'm trying my best to put as much content over there as possible um i hope that you are keeping safe and keeping well and keeping occupied more than anything else and obviously as i said it is mental health awareness week next week and um i'm excited to be putting together a video um in sort of not in celebration of but just in awareness of i think that's probably like the best the best um terminology to use um so yeah, please do look out for that because hopefully it will um, be quite quite interesting. I'm going to make it as sort of like soft and friendly as possible, I think, um, because I do, I do know it's a very sensitive subject and it's obviously very, very prevalent at the moment, so I want to keep it as sort of low-key but also as appropriate as possible. I don't think there's anything else really to catch up with you guys about at the moment. Um, it's just been a busy week, um, and I'm just going to try and get back into the swing of drawing. I need to get this commission done. I also have got a lot of, lots of other work to be getting on with as well. Um, I really want to do another. Um, spend spend some time on the stag that I've been drawing as well but I don't think I'm going to have time to work on him for a little while which I'm absolutely gutted about because I was so so excited to make a start on him um, but yeah it's not going to happen anytime soon but I don't think I need to try and really get my hand underway with um, all of this commission work that I've got backlogged um, otherwise I'm going to have some very very unhappy customers which is obviously not what I intend but I've got to also remember just to be kind to myself and I think that is a really really important message and it's one that I often forget regardless of the fact I did a massive whole bumblebee social media piece about it um, 
the whole like behind movement um yeah it's something i still struggle with massively just to remember to be kind to myself especially at the moment i put so much pressure on myself and i know a lot of you guys do too you obviously you want to achieve and you want to do really well and there's nothing wrong with that but when it comes to your mental health it shouldn't be joked with and it shouldn't be um taken lightly so if you feel that you're doing too much just try and take a step back and just reconnect with um what inspires you and you know just what makes you happy and i think yeah that's that's sort of sort of like the the wave of video that i want to try and create next week but anyway um i think i'm gonna leave this here for now i haven't got a massive amount more to say and i don't want to keep drawing and sort of like just rambling on for the sake of it um but i hope you guys are doing really well as i said um thank you so much for watching this video thank you for being you and thank you for being here um and i will see you very soon in the next one lots of love bye